They are our enemy. They've chosen it. They've declared it. We got yeah. government mainstream news, Chinese communist documents. They're trying to fund anti-fun uprisings. I mean, this is the war against America. And like you said, you try to speak to them as humans. They just disregard that and use it as weakness. But they do listen to your fist smashing into their face. Yeah, yes, they do. Um, it, it seems to amp them up on social networking more than anything. In person, they aren't very much of a threat. So, you know, that's why we keep encouraging more patriots to come out there because it's so effective when they show up in numbers. Um, and that's all that really needs to happen. So, you know, the more people we can get out there. I just love how you giant roundhouse right hook and then shove him down so his head hits the pavement. That probably hurt him worse. God, I love it. I got to tell you, it's just it's it's better than a, a fake Rocky movie. I mean, <laughs> I mean you, I, I'm sorry, he's a scumbag, man, trying to kill you with a baton, and he's a piece of crap, and he just he's like he, it's just it's beautiful. I love the control by Rufio Panman as the guy's trying to hit him with an extendable metal baton that can break arms, put out eyes. When he smashes that little meth head, the guy's not a small guy, but a little communist face in, and then the the globalist uh, minion woman tries to get him to hit her, and he instantly doesn't smash her in her ugly face. So Rufio uh, was on the battleground in Portland participating in a prayer, patriot prayer march when he was confronted by a baton-wielding Antifa. Antifa swung at him twice. Uh, Rufio blocked the shots and then brought the Antifa warrior to the ground with one right-hand punch. And then all the rest ran. And it's repeated. I've seen videos of women taking on guys and taking them down. And it's just the fact that these guys are all in their head. They didn't grow up in America. They didn't, most of them are rich kids. They just hate America and they're just scum. So, Rufio, we salute you. Everybody loves you. And that's what it's all about. Uh, it's so exciting. But again, every time these people run, but he did have a deadly weapon. He was trying to, you know, swat you. It would have obviously split you open if he hit you with it. Uh, but but just describing, because, again, cameras only catch so much. I spent hours looking at what happened. The police guiding you guys into them, letting them come. The police standing down. What pre what precipitated you coming out? Because I know you guys saw before how they attacked men, women, and children. No one was there. Uh, this is just an incredible archetypal Americana or just good versus evil story. So we salute you. You're now a folk hero and obviously an Antifa scumbag target. On Facebook, you're at Rufio Panman PB. Instagram, Rufio underscore Panman. So, so God bless you. Uh, tell us all about just your awakening. What happened to all of this? Um, well, I've been doing this for a little over a year now. Um, been to many rallies up and down the West Coast from Seattle to Berkeley. So, you know, facing Antifa isn't uh, unfamiliar to me. Um, but the Portland rally last weekend was obviously probably one of the most violent I've seen. Um, and it's, you know, as far as the police standing down, I, uh, none of that should have happened. Um, if that would have happened in Seattle, it would have been a whole different story. The police are a lot better there. Um, so, you know, I was, I was genuinely worried for the people around me and their safety. Um, and this is a continual problem we're having. And like you said, this is a at least a very soft civil war right now. And if people don't start uh, to kind of wake up to what's going on, it's going to progress into something worse. So, so talk about you, your awakening, who you are. It's interesting to folks and just what you've seen, because cameras don't capture it. Just because I've been around Antifa myself back when I learned who they were 15 years ago, when they would attack myself and reporters just covering stuff and they're just the scum of the earth, but just describe your awakening, what you've witnessed. I know people were mad and came out because earlier this year they had an a event in Portland where women and children were attacked when no one was there to fight back. So, so just break that down. Um, well, I mean, I, I went into this originally pretty passive. I wanted to try and debate with them. I wanted to try and uh, see eye to eye. You know, I've, I've Every time I go out there, um, you know, I'm trying to find some middle ground with these people. And like you said, you know, women, children, teenagers, elderly, they're all right there just trying to support their country. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to see. So, you know, when you see that on a consistent basis getting worse and worse, um, you know, you, you start to kind of develop this, this feeling that these are no longer people who who are 
necessarily Americans per se, but they're kind of anti-American. And then, you know, you kind of have to separate yourself from them. You're saying they're the enemy. They they are our enemy. They've chosen it. They've declared it. We got yeah. government mainstream news, Chinese communist documents. They're trying to fund anti-fun uprisings. I mean, this is the war against America. And like you said, you try to speak to them as humans. They just disregard that and use it as weakness. But they do listen to your fist smashing into their face. Yeah, yes, they do. Um, it, it seems to amp them up on social networking more than anything. In person, they aren't very much of a threat. So, you know, that's why we keep encouraging more patriots to come out there because it's so effective when they show up in numbers. Um, and that's all that really needs to happen. So, you know, the more people we can get out there. I just love how you giant roundhouse right hook and then shove him down so his head hits the pavement. That probably hurt him worse. Oh, God, I love it. I got to tell you, it's just it's it's better than a, a fake Rocky movie. I mean, <laughs> I mean you, I, I'm sorry, he's a scumbag, man, trying to kill you with a baton, and he's a piece of crap, and he just he's like he's, it's just it's beautiful. Well, you, I don't think he did too well either. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, Alex. Yeah, How, but be I honest, about, like I don't like hurting innocent people or weak people, but. A few times in my life when some bullies trying to kill me and they're bigger than I am, when I finally see their head hit the pavement, it felt good. How good did it feel, at least later, once you saw his head hit the pavement? Well, like uh, Gavin McGinnis says, you know, violence isn't great, but justified violence is amazing. Um, you know, <laughs> it's just one of those things where you just react instinctively and, uh, you know, when you can kind of overpower in that moment, it, it feels, it does feel good. It is a positive feeling. Um, I can tell you that in that situation, there wasn't a whole lot of celebration going on. It was more, I was more worried about the safety of uh, the people around. Oh, I would have smacked that. I mean, I don't want to hit women. I never have. But in the moment, somebody trying to kill me with a metal baton. And I just did that. And there's a pretty big woman coming at me. She looks she's like 6'3 or something. I mean, you were like just, you were in the zone, man. You're like, it's like a video game. It's like, this is like the movies. <laughs> wish that it was like, boom, you do all. And all of a sudden, you just like didn't know that you like didn't hit her. Yeah, well, you know, I uh, <laughs> she she was she was pressing on me, and I, I told her, "Hey, you better get back because this is not I'm not playing around." And so I gave her the opportunity, and she took it. Um, you know. Well, I noticed that I trying know, to get into Trump's inauguration, they had lines of women hitting us, hoping that we would hit them back. We just pushed through them, but. To get into Trump's deal, you had to push. The first thing was women. Talk about cowards right. like the Islamicists. And then it was a couple of dudes. But we had to ram through women to get into the, you know, to get into Trump's inauguration. So it seems they put women out front. They do. That's their tactic. They put the women in front, and then the the little sleaze bags will hang out in the back with batons and stuff and try and get a hit on you from behind the women. And they're so like they're like comic book scumbags like you said like how could you be so scummy as a man that you put women up front yeah well i mean even they they have no uh fighting etiquette either there's no there's no moral foundation for them They're, they were throwing explosives into a crowd of people there could have been easily been a baby stroller nearby there's no there's no thought process into what they're doing um and so in, on that level, you know, you can't really have any sympathy for after they do things like that. You just have to eliminate them as a threat. And that's what we were doing. Proud Boys did an amazing job. Um, I, I can't imagine what would have happened if we weren't there. Um, you know, I Again, you know, Proud I Boys is Gavin McGinnis' group, which is proud to be male, proud of masculinity. Because they teach on universities, for those that don't know, that masculinity doesn't exist. Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually toxic, Alex. You know, it's toxic to be masculine these days. Uh, and it hurts the people around you if you're too masculine, I guess. They're teaching this all over the place, and it's it's. And they try to teach women, don't be feminine, which is powerful. Don't be masculine, which that's the power. We should all be ascribing to that, but they want to kill that. Right. And they are. We're going to go to break in a minute, but I want you to have the floor because it's just it's great. Get get more into your awakening just briefly. Like, like what, what, where'd you come from? What was, what stirred you? Um, well, I, uh, I was born and raised in Washington. Um, you know, I have a very great, good family. Uh, been pretty productive all my life. Um, I've always loved my country. Um, you know, uh, I got involved in the movement originally last May Day because I was just tired of what I was seeing. And I went out to Seattle with one of my boys, um, not knowing anything about the movement. And that's where I was introduced to the Proud Boys who, 
you know, uh, allowed me to network with like-minded men, and it's been uh, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, and, you know, since then, there's been a lot of, uh, I guess you could call awakening to what's really going on, desensitizing myself, getting out of that political correctness state of mind. Um, That's right, breaking just, free. We'll be back to talk more on the other side. History's happening. Traders in our own country have sold us out to the globalists, but in the final minutes, America woke up. Our guests will be with us throughout the hour. We're going to open the phones up specifically to talk to Rufio Panman, who, again, he uses that name, obviously, because they'll target his family and others. Is what Antifa does, doxing everybody, sabotaging your houses. They're just the nastiest, mainly college professor, little criminals you could imagine. But the, we're going to open the phones up in the next segment, 877 seven eight nine two five three nine eight seven 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 eight nine alex eight seven 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 eight nine alex questions only for our guest but the, what a wide area to discuss so rufio obviously not giving antifa power but it, it's smart to not use your you know your own god-given name because they'll come after you it's what they do as cowards they sneak up on you so it's a good strategic thing not to do that but they're going to target you now obviously, because you're becoming a big archetype symbol against their cowardice. Talk about that, and then talk about, because I saw the other videos, they ran once one person fought them, and they do that everywhere. And then I've seen the videos at anti-abortion rallies or pro-gun rallies. Antifa will, like, attack an old guy in a wheelchair or a woman on crutches, or they'll hit a They go and target a woman, and for me, I'm not the toughest guy in the world, but... Women don't even register who I'm going to attack. I look for, like, the biggest guy and, like, start wanting to fight him if it's a fight. Just as a male, that's what I would do. Like, who's the biggest? If I'm in a tribal fight, I got to take them down. They look for the weakest. I don't even that, – that shows how we're blind to them because I don't even understand the psychology of attacking two-year-olds and babies in, 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 in baby carriages. They're the anti-chivalry. They're the anti-male. Who the hell are these, these creatures? I don't want to call them men. Who are they? Um, well, I, I would, uh, you know, the way I would explain them is any victory to them, even the smallest little assault on the opposing side, doesn't matter if it's a child, a teenager, an elderly person in a wheelchair, they take that and they'll go celebrate. Um, that's a victory to them because they know that re they can't face real strength. Um, so it's all a LARPing thing, in, in my opinion. It's these people who have probably been playing video games their whole life and, and been in this state of mind like there's some fantasy warrior in real life that they've never trained or even thought about what that's really like. So when they're facing, you know, veterans and, you know, ex-police officers and guys who have been fighting and MMA fighters, you know, it's just... It's, it's funny to say the least, but it's the real threat is when they're throwing bricks and rocks and explosives and bringing weapons and we're completely disarmed by the police, you know. So we're, in a way, we're in a, at a disadvantage, but not to the same time. Yeah, break that down because it, we have even George Soros documents we've covered where they have blue city areas. You guys are willing to go in to exercise the First Amendment, which is heroic. They're throwing... You, uh, mortars that can blow your hand off. They're throwing bricks, and, and you guys all get searched. You get let in. Then they let them come in. They've always got the weapons. I mean, again, it just shows the cowardice of Soros who funds this and all of it, and still they're defeated. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't think that they're funded. They think it's just, uh, you know, just people coming out to support. But you have to remember all of these people they're wearing matching uniforms. They're all coming with weapons that aren't, you know, cheap. Some of these weapons are pretty expensive. And you know that Antifa, a lot of them, they don't have any prominent jobs or anything. You can just tell. Um, and so they're getting that from somewhere. So people need to realize that. Um, I can't specifically say who it is. George Soros is, you know, obviously that's a huge lead right there. Oh, but, he's on uh, record. He's on record funding a lot of it, yeah. Right. Yeah, but as you can see, a lot of the weapons that have been um, taken from Antifa, you get knives, swords, just the craziest things. You know, magazines were taken uh, from the last rally, several magazines uh, with with uh, pistol ammunition. Um, yeah, and they'll completely, they'll check us, they'll check our bags. I mean, we can't even bring pepper spray in. Our women can't even carry pepper spray. Um, and so... You know, that's where Proud Boys come in. We, we come in with protective vests and eyewear, and that's about all we can do. 
and we come in and just charge them and, and just hope for the best. Um, obviously, this is something that we're pretty acclimated to. Uh, so, you know, I got to keep giving honor to my boys because it's I, I truly believe we, we saved lives that. Day. Oh, you have. And it's, a, it's extremely heroic in a system of cowards to know the police in a blue city. And the system wants to make an example of you and you still like the lion's den march in there and then turn the tide against them. When one person fights, they all run. It, 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 it shows the hoax of the hoax of evil. The, the devil goes around like a lion seeing who he can devour, who will fall down and grovel, who will who will roll over. Yep. Yeah, great men need to keep standing strong. This, this nation was built by great men. And, um, you know, the mayor of Portland and the city council of Portland, um, they think that they can get away with siding with these criminals. And... I think slowly but surely we're starting to expose this more and more. And, you know, I don't believe that all these police officers want to stand down. You know, I'm, I'm talking to some of them and, and I'm seeing their faces. You know, when you join when you join the, the police force or the military, you know, you have a sense, something about you that you want to protect your, you know, your uh, your country. And. These guys aren't able to do that. I don't know if all of them are on the same page, but you can tell that they definitely want to be more involved than they're allowed to be. Um, they're being ordered to stand down, and it's it's pathetic to say the least. The kind of, I mean, if this was a private sector, if we hired somebody to protect us, they would have failed miserably. They would have been fired. Um, so the fact that they couldn't even, you know, um, they couldn't even follow through with what they promised us after they disarmed us. They promised us that they would protect us against Antifa and, and didn't even try in the slightest. At a gut level, where do you see this going? The whole launch of the liberal civil war, what's happening, the left is going into this crazed mode. At a gut level, where do you think this is going? Um, you know, I'm hoping from the optics of the last Poland rally that we can influence other people and wake people up. Um, if we can't, you know, do that, we have people on the opposing side, um, senators and and politicians and city council people, mayors, everybody who's advocating for violence. Uh, Maxine Waters, that clip that keeps playing, that she's calling for violence against Trump supporters. And Trump supporters make up a, a great amount of people in this nation. So, you know, that's a huge divide of people that she's actively calling out for violence. And what we're seeing is on the streets is a side effect of that. When people are showing up. There was at least a thousand Antifa and not even accounting just crazy liberals and everybody else who was along the ride. Antifa alone. And so, you know, those, that's those a great question. What were your numbers versus the crazy liberals? I mean, guesstimation, what, what, what were the numbers? Um, I think we had a couple hundred ourselves. Um, and that was the whole that was the whole rally. Proud Boys, I think we had um, over 100, which was the biggest turnout we've ever had at a rally for Proud Boys. So a couple hundred so people stood against a thousand communists and everything else. And, and, and history repeats. When we come back, we're going to talk about where the globalists want to take this and how we stop it straight ahead in your phone call. Stay with us. Imagine you're on the George Soros-funded Antifa side, funded by Communist China, the big banks, want to bring down America. You'll teach these people. You'll break their will. America doesn't deserve half the wealth of the planet in 1955. We're going to take it and parlay it into power. And so you're going to go out you're going to dump coffee on Trump supporters. You're going to beat them up. You're going to threaten them. You're going to not give them jobs. You're going to teach them to submit. And then you go out and you beat up a month ago people at a conservative rally and overturn baby carriages and beat women up. That's on the news. And Antifa, like, beating women up. Like, yeah, I knocked a woman out. Yeah. My God, I commit suicide if I did that. And then finally you show up again and, like, maybe 20, 30 men show up. And there's a thousand of you, and but only a few dozen are willing to go up and fight. And then men beat your ass, and so you all run. They don't give up, though, going, God, we're pieces of crap. We're filth. No, they just they get more angry. So that's the historic crossroads we're at. 
and the type of scum that has been allowed to run free in this country, it just makes me ask, what comes next? Because you go out to these rallies, and they'll be wearing $500 jackets and $200 shoes, and they'll be, you know, on a smartphone more expensive than mine. You know, mine's like 300 bucks, or is 1000 And I, I, I followed them. I've got, video, like, you're getting a thousand, $100,000 Jaguar? I'm driving an F-150. But they're communists, but they drive around in Jaguars. And like our guest just said, that was really smart. It's LARPing. It's live action playing. So let me ask Rufio Panman, if you just joined us, to, to not just answer my questions. He's a gentleman. I've been, I've been steering the conversation. We're going to take some calls in a minute. What do you want to say most? What do you want to impart about what you witnessed first, though? Answer my question on this. Because I know those metal batons are dangerous. This guy's swinging out at you. He's trying to kill you with it. What was it like in that moment, and then how did it feel when you broke his jaw and then shoved him down to hit his head in the pavement and were still in control not to hit that woman? I mean, what was the what was the energy like at that moment when you saw them attacking people and no one was standing up to go in and do that? Um, well, uh, it felt pretty good to, you know, my my you lose that fear uh, and, and everything is kind of, since, you know, if you love your country and you see people attacking your countrymen and imposing an ideology that would, in the long run, tear your country apart, you know, there isn't a, a thought process. It's just instinctual. You're just going to go and you're going to take those people out. Um, obviously, we're not going and advocating to just fight people just because they have a different ideology. But like you see, you know, I'm being attacked, though, a deadly weapon, um, and many of our people ha were being attacked with weapons. So that's that's what I mean by go and fight those people and eliminate the threat. Um, and you know, it was it was a it was a victorious day for us. We celebrated like Vikings that night, um, and you know, it was it was probably one of the best days we've had in over a year. Describe some of the other stuff you've seen on the West Coast because you've been all over in these fights. What Antifa does. The, the little dastardly activities? Yeah, I, I was at uh, Evergreen College. I've been to Berkeley, um, been to Portland many times, Seattle. And from college campuses, you get the you get the students, and they won't even talk to you. They don't want to debate. They don't want to, you know, they just want to yell and scream and, and claim victimhood mentality over you. And, and you know, obviously being a white guy um, and being a proud boy, you know, I lose all my credibility to people like that, even though I'm, you know, very involved with what's going on firsthand and nobody wants to talk or hear my perspective. So when you start to eliminate conversation and debate and all you want to do is fight, then that's what you're going to get. Um, that's just how the world works. You know, if conflict all over the world, things like that happen, when you're unable to communicate with each other and all you want to do is argue and fight, that's when war breaks out. Wow, that's very profound. Exactly. So they lose physically everywhere they take the field. Don't they get them their arguments a loser that in the third dimension we always win? I mean, don't they get like if one of you can beat 20 of them, shouldn't they go, oh, we should emulate you, Rafael Panman, not Saul Alinsky, the devil worshiper? Um, well, I think that's why they use such extreme tactics. You know, they, they throw bombs and stuff and and I think they're they're hoping to scare us. They're they're doxing. They're threatening and their jobs. Th you just said it. Society. They think we're like them. They keep thinking they're scaring us. All they're doing is pissing us off. So let me ask you that: Where does it go then? Yeah. <laughs> where does it? Is they think we're like well, them? Like, know, uh, do you think we're scaring us? No, you're not doing that. We're spending every waking yeah, moment. How do we crush you? Uh, discuss that. That's key. Um. I mean, a lot of us have gotten really, really angry. Our, you know, our stuff has been vandalized. Our, do our jobs have been targeted. Some guys have lost their jobs. So, you know, when we start to, when we stop having things to lose, when they eliminate, you know, the things that in our personal lives that we're trying to protect, um, then that doesn't, you know, it kind of eliminates our limitation and it's making them weaker in a sense, if that makes any sense. It's, it's making us stronger and more willing to com combat them as they target us more. Well, no, that's what this, you just said the key to it all. They think attacking us makes us weak because that's how they would back off from that. They don't understand, like, that's what makes us wake up.
Right. In a sense, though, it does. It is um, for a lot of people who aren't really woken up and who are still kind of in that politically correct mind, even though they might be a patriot to a sense. That sense of fear does hold a lot of people back. They don't want to be acknowledged on the internet or public information put out there. They don't want to be targeted, and it and it. Uh, but they're know, already being sense, targeted. Uh, you have to embrace it now. Right. Yeah, and a lot of people, that's the thing is, a lot of people don't realize they are already a target, and we're trying to create awareness. It's like, look, if you love your country in any way, if you want to fly an American flag, you're a target. You know, and, and if things are the way they are now, imagine how they're going to be if you have kids and they're in, you know, 10 years Exactly. Down Our free will is under attack. Like, we let them have their free will. They don't want us to have free will. They want control of our destiny, our souls. And I say, death before dishonor, death before disgrace, victory or death, like Colonel Travis. Right, exactly. Plus, how could we let a bunch of cowardly scum like this tell us what to do? How do we ever get in this position, uh, Rufio? How do we, we ever get here? Um, I think we got too comfortable for a long time. I think people... You know, when you live a comfortable life like we have as Americans for so long without any conflict other than 9-11, you know, people during the Obama administration got really comfortable. Um, and I think, you know, I can personally say that I lost hope in the political system. And when Trump got elected, that hope was renewed. I, I never celebrated more. I, I, had, I didn't think that he was going to win, honestly. And when he did, I was overjoyed. So with so that... So spiritual. You felt hope reignited. Yeah. Definitely. We're going to come back and take a few calls. we got a minute and a half, though. What else is on your mind? Your own words, not my questions. What else is at the heart of standing up against evil? What, what else is your view on the, what's going to happen? Um, well, I, I think men need to be willing to stand up. More men need to be willing to stand up. And that's kind of my mission is to empower men in the community, young and old, all alike all that you know all races doesn't matter your sexual orientation i don't care you know stand up for your country because you know this country is the reason why you can be any race any sexual orientation doesn't matter and live a free life and so you know with that in mind i would love people to just even in the smallest way stand up and and do what's right that's a great point i'm not just saying that everything you say is like spot on like, this is the country that says there's all this freedom, and then they use that against us. Like, we've been bad to people compared to other countries. Like, no, we're the fount of, of the freedom. Yeah. Don't blow that up. And, and, and it's the fake yeah. liberals that are the authoritarians that want the control of that power. They would kill that power. They would kill that freedom. Exactly. We'll be back with your phone calls for two more segments with Rufio Panman. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com, Newswars.com. He's at Rufio, Pat, PB, on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Rufio underscore Panman. The global revolution against dehumanization is happening now. Stay with us. These anti you think they're going to beat up women and children a month ago and that men aren't going to see that and show up? They've asked me to come, and I don't want to make big stunts, and i got a family, and I'm under attack here. I know the information we do is important, but I think I'm going to accept the challenge to go to Portland because that's a real center of evil and anti-free speech, and I can't not take the challenge. I don't want the attention or the insanity that comes with it, but at a certain point, I don't go out in public because it gets so crazy, but I think we need to put our flesh in the game, even if it puts everything else we're doing at risk because it has to be done. It's metaphysical. I want to take calls this segment the next with Rufio Panman, our guest. Uh, who's gone out to all these different events and a great job standing up against these tyrants. And we're going to go to calls right now. We're going to go to Javon, Liberty Smith, Aaron, Andrew, and many others uh, with our guest here, who I'm really impressed with. Not only is he a you know, guy that knew how to, like, take a baton away from a guy trying to kill him and knock him out, and then, like, a woman attacks him, but he knows how to control himself in that moment of fury. See, I'd have, I'd have probably done pretty good. I might have hit the guy, not shoved him down, but I'd have got the hit in. <laughs> he does that perfect shot, like winding up and hitting him, then shoves him down so his head hits the concrete. Perfect. And then doesn't hit the woman. I'd have just got the big shot in, broke my hand, and then hit the woman. So, just obviously, I'm doing that. Somebody's coming at me. I'm going to get him. So, it's like, it's perfect piece of video. It's like Muhammad Ali stuff. And I'm, I'm not kissing your ass, but it's true. But I think it was just spiritual that you weren't trying to be a thug. You were standing if it was right, but you, in that millisecond, executed it perfect. I'm sorry. It's like a piece of sports film. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean do you see what I'm saying? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just overjoyed that you uh, are considering going to Portland. They uh, want me to go. <laughs> It'll be a circus, but yeah. Yeah, it's definitely going to be, but it'd be an honor to have you there, man. We better set it up then soon. All right, let's go ahead to these calls. Uh, let's talk to, uh, I want to meet all you guys, though. That's, I'm excited about this. You guys are doing just as important work as we are. That's the thing. It's like, what I'm doing is not that special. There's all these men and women ready to do the same thing. If you just do it, it's greatness is waiting for humanity. Just do it. Stop waiting. That's what I keep saying. I'm not that special. There's all these other incredible people. We're all special if we take action. You're not just special for not taking action. You don't all get a participation trophy for doing nothing. You get it when you participate. Let's go ahead and uh, go to Javon in New Jersey. You're on the air. Go ahead. How you doing, sir? It's a pleasure uh, talking to you. Uh, I'm a big fan. God bless. Uh, I've ordered most of the uh, products. The brain force is incredible. It, it honestly, it works. Not a placebo. It works. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to comment about. Um, he said something very valid about the men, about the men uh, coming out and standing up. And you know, I believe. You know, I call myself a born again Christian. And I'm talking to young men, and I'm trying to enlighten them and. When I talk to them, they're very shocked on how I like Trump and my political views and how I view things. And the old, the, the, the older men that pastors and that bishops and stuff like that, they can't really do the footwork that us younger Christian men can do. And I don't believe, you know, I'm seeing a lot of uh, mighty men of valor, Christian men standing up against tyranny and evil and even preaching about it over the pulpit. And I just think it's very uh, important in times like these that we should be on the forefront out here with these other people and that we're proclaiming we're, we're Christians and, and that we're men of God, but we're standing, you know, in the in the back seat. We need to be out in the front seat. No, I agree. So how do we mobilize the church in this country when the epic battle is happening to take action? Great point, Javon. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, what do you think, Rufio? Well, you know, that's a big challenge. Um, I'm Christian myself, and I thoroughly believe that if Jesus was here today, he'd be right out there with us. I don't know if he'd be throwing punches, but he'd definitely be a huge influence to the rest of us out there. Well, he'd only throw uh, punches on bankers. Christ well, only beat I, up the top guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can't speak for Jesus, but, you know, I know he'd be out there. Um, it is hard. We, Me and Joey Gibson, I, Joey does a great job. He's one of the most influential people I've ever met. I mean, he's one of the reasons why we're so successful out on the West Coast, but we've we've really tried and reached out to local churches, and I think it's just, it's really hard uh, for them on, on a kind of that political correctness term, you know, uh, mentality. They don't want to really s side with any, you know, political figure. Um, and, and they never want to give kind of men sad. a chance to feel like they can do something. They, do the, they want men to just be compartmentalized like women. Right. Yeah, I think the, the traditional sense of, you know, men standing up and defending uh, not just, you know, themselves or the, their, their loved ones, but their country and, you know, um, standing up for like-minded men, it, it's it's not the same as it used to be. And, uh, and let's be clear, the, you've got a bunch, I don't want to demonize men, but it's true, you got a bunch of evil globalist men that are running this, and they're worried about right. men. That's why they want to put men, like, oh, men are bad, men are bad. It's all a bunch of evil men doing it because they're scared of other men. Exactly. And it's a reach for power. And so it's a strategical um, attack on men because men are the ones, it's our responsibility to protect the minds, hearts, and bodies of our people. And when you lose that protection, you lose your, you lose your society, you lose. Well, let's be honest, men are expendable them. for the women and children. And when yeah. men sit back and try to play it safe, societies collapse. No, men are expendable. And that's what you did fighting the guy with the baton, which you're like, well, that's just the regular thing to do. Exactly. But 99% of men wouldn't do that. They wouldn't show up to begin with. They they go, oh, being safe is how we get there. No, you guys doing this is what's destroyed the country. America took on an empire that had never been defeated and beat it because men did it. And their women backed them. And then you guys sit there yeah. thinking you're men because you sit on the sideline. No, you're not men. So stop thinking because you go to the gym and act tough and all this crap, you're men. You're not. Let's take another call here. Liberty Smith in Oklahoma, you're on the air. Go ahead. You're the man. You're the man. Go ahead. Hey, um, 
I just, what's your guest's first name again? I don't want to pronounce it wrong. It's a Rufio Panman. That's a gnome de plume because of his enemies and Antifa, but that's a, that's a, that's a alias. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted him to know that when I saw that video yesterday, I basically stood up and cheered and fist pump. It was almost like the tr President Trump got elected again. That's how good I felt. But it's so Man, perfect how he winds it up, knocks the guy out, knocks his goggles off for gas, and then pushes him down to the ground and then doesn't whack the woman who gets in his face. Because, I mean, I'm not saying I want to hit a woman, but I would have... Somebody's. I mean, I get in that mode, like... How many anybody gets around me? It gives me some friendly fire, so a lot of control there. Very impressive. I feel that way, too. I feel that way, too, Alex. One other thing I just wanted to say, uh, you know, in reference to your last caller, well, you know, during our fight for independence, many preachers preached from the pulpit and had guns underneath. So, and then they went out and fought. And we missed the Black Brigade today, but people are going to be risen up like Rufio Panman, who don't want to be leaders, but they're not going to lay down. God bless you. I appreciate your call. What about everybody I talked to on the show, some of the folks you mentioned, uh, Rufio Pammon, who just feel it in their gut like like a year or two ago. They didn't want to do anything, but they had to. Black, white, you name it, who just feel it in their spirit. They got to do this. I think that's what scares the globals. They realize is that is that there's a big calling happening. Yeah. I think that's the American spirit. You know, uh, I think it dwells in a lot of us. And if you start to feel that way, I think you should embrace it because um, that's what makes this country great. That's what built this country. What and, is the uh, American spirit? I want you to define it. What is it? Uh, the American spirit to me is um, having a an incredible pride. We call ourselves Western chauvinists. Um, it's like a extremely patriotic, um, but you know, just doing the right doing what's right and doing what's best for your people in the most free sense of of i guess that term um I, I, it's really hard to explain it's it just, means not it's calculating a, but whatever is the most honest not being it means just right. doing what's right right exactly yeah it's a very selfless feeling um and that's you know that's what this country is built off of is selfless men you know, who put themselves in the line, gave the ultimate sacrifice. And so that's what I would say the American spirit is. So it's like an exorcism nationally. What are the globalists, the Chai Com minions, what are they going to do as the top blows off our heads and like out of the ashes comes this huge giant? They see it now. What are they going to do, though? I think they'll, they'll, you know, they might go to more extreme lengths. They're going to try and reach for whatever they can use to you know, harm us, to hurt us, to scare us, um, you know, until it gets, until somebody gets killed, um, you know, once that happens, then it's obviously, I think it'll go to the next step, and that that's, you know, when we'll see some real civil war. Um, and I and think people... we're about to cross that point, back in two minutes to discuss that, and I don't want to go there, but if they take us there, it's our domain. All right, we're taking more calls this segment than the next, and then Dr. Nick Baggage, one of the top experts on globalist shadow government secret technologies has taken over his dad was a congressman plane taken down his brother u.s senator he's one of the smartest guys out there he's taken over but rufio panman who's gone out and faced anti all over the country you're like okay great he knocked out a few guys trying to kill him big deal well where are you and i know most guys aren't like that but i'm just saying history is happening now and they're trying to intimidate everybody and so it's true. People ask me to go to these events. I'm like, well, I'm doing big stuff and digital stuff, and it'll be a big circus, and they'll call out SWAT teams and a thousand anti full show. But I got to kind of realize I got to show up. So I will be showing up at some of these events soon, maybe in Portland, wherever. They've all asked me to do it. I know I'm walking into a death trap, but it has to be done because we can't sit here and celebrate what Rufio's doing if we don't do it as well. Uh, now, Rufi, I want to take some phone calls in this segment and the next, but I wanted to ask you if there was any other little tidbits you wanted to add. Um, well, I only I was going to ask you if you'd be willing to do a Proud Boy first degree. What's a Proud Boy first degree? I mean, I have I have Gavin McGinnis on. I follow, but what's a Proud Boy first degree? You just state that you're a Western chauvinist and you refuse to apologize for creating the modern world. I am a Western chauvinist, and I do not apologize for creating the Western world. Hooroo. 
<laughs> that's all, man. That's uh, that's all I wanted to ask. But the Renaissance is a hope for all of humanity. The Renaissance launched uh, abolition. It launched women's rights. It launched, and it's not like I'm what because I, I agree with you, but they misrepresent what that means. It means we were the best ideas of humanity christianity makes with the renaissance other ideas that said let's empower everybody so why don't we sit back and told we're the racist when we tried to free the whole world that, that i agree with that ethos um yeah i think it's you know it's their go-to they, they don't have anything else to hold against us we're great people some of the biggest hearts i've ever met out in this patriot movement you know the most welcoming loving people would do anything for you um so you know obviously there's not really anything else you can you can, you know, call them other than racist, but that doesn't stick. So I don't really know, you know, what their intentions are, why they're staying so hard with that uh, narrative. But, you know, well, I'll come I out to Portland, but I love to Portland. share the spotlight. We should have Gavin come out there with me. And I guess we'll have a big rally in Portland in a couple months. I think I got one come up in August for a little early, but we should have a big event, build it up, and I'll be there. Uh, sounds good, yeah. Because I could go to the, all the universities and have circuses and get in the news. I just have realized, like, and I, I, I go with a gut level instinct, you know, thing, uh, subconscious analysis, supercomputer stuff. And so I haven't figured it was right. I haven't done it. But I think with Portland and what I've seen and everything, I think it's the place right in the lion's den to show up and have a big event. I think you're right. Yeah. Portland is by far the biggest uh, Antifa far left crazy den of uh i don't know just darkness what do you it's think they do when they get they attack people and get their ass kicked every time so what are don't they get they're the losers um i i you know i would hope so but i they think of themselves as kind of like the star wars uh re, you know rebels the uh the resistance you know they're they're justified even if they lose they it's just to prepare for the next battle for them. So they can punch a baby in the face and, like, spray some capitalist. Exactly. They have no rules. They're just, they realize they're total cowards. Right. Well, they're the real, I mean, they call us Nazis, but they're the real Nazis, like the, you know, the brown shirts. They So when they're hitting people, babies and stuff, it's, it's all justified because, you know, all we represent is evil to them. So, well, I'll be honest. I'm not the toughest guy around, but... If I see somebody punch a baby, I'm going to, I'm going to, I mean, I can't help it. It's not going to go well. So, yeah. I, <laughs> but like you said, it happened before. That's what they do. We'll be back yeah. with the final segment with our guests. Take a few more calls on the other side of this quick break. Newswars.com, Infowars.com. The Dr. Nick Baggage is taking over. But, but can you imagine being a grown man who would attack a woman? I mean, that's a liberal, though. So, the foretold battle is now here. We're taking your phone calls for one more segment. Dr. Nick Beggis is taking over. We have joining us Rufio Panman at Rufio Panman PB on Facebook, Instagram, Rufio underscore Panman. The point is the uh, Antifa Slayer. <laughs> this, this, I've seen a lot of boxing footage. This, this is right up there, right up there with Muhammad Ali. And it's just great stuff like the wind up and then shoving him so his head slams in the ground. He's trying to kill you with a baton. It's like, I don't celebrate violence till you attack me. Then I'm all, because I'm not, I'm not offensive. I'm defensive. So do you want to beat somebody up for no reason? No, but you try to, to kill me, then I will really want to hurt you. And there's a lot of other footage as they run down the street. I want to take some few phone calls. But Rufio, describe the atmosphere where the police, because it happened earlier, heard everyone in together to have a big fight. And then what Antifa did, because we, we can't play all the footage. There's hours of it. Once you, like, broke that guy's jaw. Um, well, um, right when the Antifa started throwing explosives, it seemed like that was when the cops kind of um, dispersed. They just kind of stood on the sidelines. You can't even really see them in, in most of the videos. Um, they're kind of off on the side. But uh, so that just left us to go and fight them as they charged us, and we charged back. Um, after I knocked out that guy, which I didn't even really fully realize until later when I saw the video, um, you can see that they start to disperse and run back to their side um as we started to you know take out one by one because you can't really see uh to the other side of the video that my guys are going to town on some of the other people that were attacking us well i've seen the videos it's amazing and there's the melee of them was this before or after they like were marching them down the street and led you guys together 
this this uh, that clip was at the tail end of the march. This was like right after they revoked our permit, which they should not have done. Um, and we're really upset about that and um, and told us to get on the sidewalk and they were going to protect us, basically. So th after that punch, um, about five minutes later, we we marched back to the rally point at the park where DHS was, the, uh, the um, Department of Homeland Security, which they did actually a pretty good job. Sure, so, but imagine the cowardice that you knock out one of their people, then they all run. Like, in a real fight, like, you knock our league out, we attack you. Well, what is the psychology of you knock one out, they all run? I mean, this is like the one guy willing to fight? Well, yeah, I mean, it's the opposite mentality of us. You know, if they took out one of our guys, we'd all charge in, so... Um, that's what we, <laughs> it's kind of funny to watch, um, but exactly their instincts they are the opposite of ours. What is, what is yeah. that? Well, it's just, you know, they're, they don't know what they're not, they're not fighting for something they love. They're, they're angry. They're, they're fighting with anger and, and that can quickly turn to fear. And, and so that's what, when you're fighting somebody who loves their country and is fighting for their country and their people, uh, you're going to, that anger is going to quickly turn to fear. Exactly, but if you're fighting for love, you can't be beaten. Right, exactly. Long term. I will right, we'll take a few phone calls here, but that's really deep what you said. Uh, who's up next here? Uh, let's talk to Aaron in Michigan. Aaron, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir, go ahead. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. We're, we're starting to turn the tide here. I'm doing really good. I support you financially as much as I can. Thank you, brother. But I feel... I feel like uh, you were talking to me earlier when you said that we need to get off the wall and start to do more because I stay trained for when that moment comes. But what else more could we do as uh, patriots of this great country? I ask that question because I need to be innovated. I don't know. Uh, Rufio Panman, you're on the front lines. You're taking action. What, what should we do? Well, at the very least, you know, get involved with um, other like-minded men. It's, you know, we were all individuals at some point, but the strength comes when we can get together. And it's really easy these days uh, that we, lit the, you know, the technology that we have to be able to network with each other. I mean, Proud Boys is... Exactly. The globalist global. fear men. Why? Because men are ready to fight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just even if you come out to... a I, I just, you know, I encourage anybody to come out to rally, even if you can't come on a regular basis, just to see firsthand, you know, what it is that it, we're facing, because that you should, you know, when you see that, you're going to envision what your children are going to be seeing if you don't do anything. You know, I see this. God always gives us a reprieve. And if we don't beat this down, can you imagine in 20 years what it's going to be like? Yeah, exactly. God almighty, I mean, men that will beat up women and children. I mean, these aren't men. These are, God, you look at these Antifa people. They are just, the crazy thing is none of them would fight you over a thousand Antifa. They sent, the in the old days, like El Cid's a movie, but it's based on true story. They sent, they would send their champion to fight your champion instead of having a whole war. That makes sense. They send their champion out. He's a big guy. You break his jaw in the first deal. Then they all cave in. That uh, shouldn't they get like, wow, we're really wimps. Everywhere we go, we get destroyed. Can't they just realize that they're in a cult of weakness? I wish they would. I think they find strength in numbers and they try and intimidate people in numbers that, you know, they'll take over a city. And with the cops standing down, you know, in a lot of in a lot of cases, they'll they'll win when it's a situation where people are outnumbered. They, you know, just your average citizen isn't gonna wanna stand up against you know, a hundred plus Antifa dressed in all black with masks and weapons. It's just, and that's, it's, it's being encouraged in a lot of these cities. So there's not really much, you know, the average person can do. So it takes, you know, men standing up and showing up to these things and standing against these people. It takes men. Andrew in Washington. Andrew, thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, thanks, Alex. I just want to say it does take a uh, great courage, man. I, uh, Went to the Mariners game on the 4th, and I was wearing my uh, Donald Trump 2020 InfoWars T-shirt. But I want to say I think the tide is turning because uh, I went there fully expecting a fight. I had my youngest son there with me, and he was legitimately scared. 
But uh, I got nothing but high fives and hugs, and everybody just wanted to take pictures, and it was crazy. Well, that's the paradox. Was... Uh, no, I agree. I'll walk down the street in a Trump shirt, or just who I am, and 30, 40 people, black, white, Hispanic, love me. But then, like, when you least expect it, somebody, like, comes over and attacks you. And then, uh, that's the great thing, though. They think the bullying is dominating us like we're them because they would be per pressure. So that's a great point. Let me ask our guest here, Rufio Panman, who knocked out the main commie leader at the Antifa. Where do they not get that paradox that they think we're like them caring about what people say? They have no inner compass. Um, I don't know. I It's really hard to understand their thinking. I, I, I would... It's really hard to explain to people, you know, their mentality and, and their cult. And so and I'm still trying to figure it out. But um, No, it's hard to describe like cowardice said, of that level. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I mean... Like attacking media, women and children, it's, it's really hard to get to that level. Yeah, the mainstream media is portraying that, you know, if you're if you're a Trump supporter, that... Um, that you're few and far between. And so, like that guy was saying, you're going out in the public expecting people to hate you, when really a lot of people, you know, are in favor of what's going on, being patriotism or being patriot um, and, you know, standing up for what's right. But they're just afraid because the mainstream media is always pushing this narrative that, you know, we're evil. I agree. So, and Andrew, what was it like? I mean, stuff. how many positive contacts versus negative? Uh, honestly, I would say I got, I didn't even see any dirty looks. I was getting... High fives. My son was—he was amazed. He was like, "Wow, Dad, you're right. You're right. Everybody does love Trump." And I was like, "This is downtown Seattle." And I, I was. I so was you passed through the mental intimidation. You went to a public venue with your son, taking your guts with you. Everything exact. Your children to battle, and you won, which shows the example. I want to salute you, Andrew. I want to salute Rafio, uh, Rufio, Panman, with all he's doing. I want to thank you all. Dr. Nick Beggers is taking over, but hey, come to Austin the next few weeks, my friend. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Well, red blood is still red, ladies and gentlemen, and we are winning, and human destiny is there. So I want to salute our guest, our producers, our crew, everybody. Taking over is Dr. Nick Baggage in four minutes, Infowars.com. You know, someone very profoundly once said, many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. He goes to jail. He goes to jail. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. This 4th of July is special. Everybody can see it. They can feel it. The globalists are attempting to kill a worldwide awakening to their tyranny. And America, yet again, is at the heart of the resistance, the globalist. That's why this 4th of July, I'm asking all of our great supporters to think about InfoWars now more than ever. And what would the world be like if InfoWars wasn't there resisting the globalist? What would have happened if you hadn't supported InfoWars? We would not be having the victories we have today. So yes, a lot of good things are happening, but the enemy is striking back. So please, think about InfoWars and funding our operation while you get great products at the same time on this 4th of July that's so historic. We have record sales going on right now. Free shipping on hundreds of different items. More than 20 items are 50% off, like Brain Force Plus. Uh, X2 is 40% off. Knockout Sleep Aid, 1776. Silver Bullets, 995 colloidal silver. And free shipping, you can't beat that. This 4th of July is special, and our sales are special to match it. Infowarsstore.com.